Hello and welcome once again to CanonBlogger.com, home of the Learning Digital Photography Podcast. My name is Jason Anderson. I am the author and host. Today I'm going to be taking you through my process for cleaning up grain inside of a photograph. And I've got a uh, hummingbird folder here, or a bird folder here I should say. And I have some shots throughout here that I really like, but if you look at the details for this, I'm going to zoom in here and let you see these details up close. It's a little blur, it's a little grainy, it's not exactly a great photo at this level. So what I'd like to do is sharpen this up and clean this up by removing some of the noise and some of the grain. And I'm going to be using Adobe Photoshop Lightroom 4 uh, to do this. This is a fantastic application for doing this sort of thing. So let me just jump right in and show you how to do this. I'm going to deal with the cropping and such in a little bit, but I want to use the global picture to make sure that my sharpening and my noise reduction are, are done globally in a way that won't cause major uh, artifacting or anything like that inside the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom this into 100% inside of here. So it fills this window and I can see it nice and big. Then I'm going to make sure I'm in my develop module. I'm going to scroll down on the far right hand side until I get to this area down here where you see this little detail panel. So the detail panel here and then just underneath that is sharpening and noise reduction. So what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to take this noise reduction. It's currently set at zero. Now I'm going to take that and I'm going to slide it all the way up to 100% just to see what our picture is going to look like. And what you'll see here once this updates, it's going to look very cartoonish and very glossy look to it. And it's, it's not a good look when someone over applies noise reduction to an image. So if I zoom this thing back out, you're going to see that it looks very pasty. That's the best way I can describe that. So I'm going to zoom this back in. There's a, there's a great way where you can see the pastiness of this. So I'll actually keep this zoomed in here. And I'm going to dial that down to about half of where I actually have it because I cranked it all the way up. So I'm going to go ahead and crank that back down to about 50 right there on the luminance level for noise reduction. So I'll just type in the number here and make that go a little quicker. And you see that the paciness has gone away substantially and I'm still getting all the noise cleaned up over here. So now that the paciness has gone away, I want to make sure I'm not making it... Um, too little of a response. So I'm going to look at the noise inside of here and the sharpness inside of here around the bird's face. So if it's not, um, if it's still too much at 50, I'm going to drop this down to 25. Let's see where we stand there. So I'm going to just type in 25. And that way you see I've done this little benchmark where I've gone all the way up, dialed it back, dialed it back. And here it's starting to look pretty good. I could probably crank this up to about 35 now without increasing the pasty look a little too much there. So that's looking pretty good right about there. The next thing I want to do then is speak to the sharpening of, of an image. And when you're shooting in RAW, which is how I shoot, you can tell it's RAW because it's got the CR2 down here. So you can tell that, that when you shoot in RAW, you're always going to have to sharpen a little in post-production just because when you're shooting in a digital world, it's not going to be as sharp coming in primarily because of the digital artifacting. So in order to compensate for that, you have to do a little bit in post here. Uh, most people will, will usually dial their sharpening up to about 50 is where I'll see this go. Oops, I dialed that too high. So let me just set that at 50. And basically what I'm going to be looking for here is I'm looking inside here and I'm starting to see some of this noise reduction coming back out or some of the noise coming back out. So this is kind of a balancing act between sharpening and noise reduction. The more you sharpen, the more noise you're going to get. And the more noise reduction you apply, the more blurry it's going to look. So you're going to have to kind of uh, bounce back and forth and figure out what numbers work best for you. A lot of people like recipes, like set your sharpening here and your noise reduction luminance here. Set this number and that number and it'll look perfect. And the problem with that kind of a recipe is it, it doesn't take into account all the variances that come into any photograph. That's why photo recipes in general are probably not a good way to go. It really is touch and feel. They can get you close but they're not going to be perfect for any given scenario. So here, what I'm probably going to want to do is I'm going to want to set my sharpening around 65 because that looks like that's going to be out a lot of sharpness. And if I pull this back out, it doesn't look like it's too pacey. It looks nice and sharp. I can see the eye when I'm zooming in there. So that looks really good. So the last step I'm going to do before I export this out to print is I'm going to crop this. And in cropping this and looking at the rule of thirds, and you can change your view settings if you go under tools and then crop guide overlay. You can change it whatever to to whatever uh, crop guide overlay you want to use. I typically will use the rule of thirds, but you have the golden spiral in here. You have other options in here for the golden ratio. You also have others in here for the, the golden K, which is the triangle one inside of here. So that gives kind of a K to see the angles. And I really like the golden K 
But here, I'm actually going to crop this vertically. And when I do that vertical crop, I want to include as much of the bird as possible and as much of the bird feeder. But you'll notice that the crop just isn't working. So if I have to choose between the two, I'm going to choose the bird over the feeder. And because I like the line of the bird there, I'm going to go ahead and set that on that uh, orientation right there. So I'll go ahead and press enter to commit those changes. And I'll zoom back in and it's still looking pretty good. The only other thing I might want to do is maybe a little bit of white balance. So I'm going to scroll right back up and I'll grab my white balance selector and I'm going to drag this right over the beak there. Maybe I'll drag it over the white. And what I'm doing is I'm looking over here in this preview area. So as I move over the white, then over the black, and then over the gray, I can see slight nuances. I'm kind of liking that black, but I'm also liking the gray. So I'm going to just apply that to both. And I'll zoom out and I'll take a look at the before and after on my Y there. So yeah, I'm really liking that look there a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and commit that. I'll just take that back to full screen and begin my export process. So that's how I go through Lightroom 4 and use advanced noise reduction techniques. And I didn't even really get in to some of the more detailed settings inside of here. What you can really do is dial things in as far as the detail and contrast goes. You can also adjust the color inside, or excuse me, you can also adjust noise reduction inside your color settings as well. So if you want to get more advanced, you can really start drilling in with all these level of details to really remove a lot more noise from your images. The better our cameras are getting, the more clear photos are becoming, even with high level ISO settings. Uh, the 40D really couldn't do well above 1600, but the cameras today are going to 32 and 6400 ISOs and producing manageable noise inside those images. So your ISO settings may be even higher, and you can still recover that detail inside of Lightroom 4 using some of these advanced techniques. So hopefully that was an enjoyable little demonstration there of how to do noise, re noise reduction and sharpening inside of Lightroom 4. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time here at canonblogger.com.